unlike the terminology associated with middle ear infections, the pathophysiology of middle ear infections is really pretty straightforward. You need three things to have a middle ear infection. You need a closed eustachian tube, you need the accumulation of fluid into the middle ear cavity, and you need inflammation. So first, how does your eustachian tube close? Well, we know already that the opening of the eustachian tube is in the posterior nasopharynx. And that's an area that's ripe for inflammation when you have something like an upper respiratory tract infection. And that's probably how most eustachian tubes get closed. You have a cold or an upper respiratory tract infection. That causes inflammation in your posterior nasopharynx. And that causes closure of the eustachian tube's opening. The second thing you need is an accumulation of fluid in the middle ear cavity called a middle ear effusion. Well, that happens pretty naturally once the eustachian tube is closed. Once the tube is closed, the air from the middle ear cavity gets absorbed into the walls of the cavity. That creates a kind of low pressure which encourages fluid to seep out of the walls of the cavity. And it also may encourage fluid to seep up in from the nasopharynx. Before you know it, you have a pool of fluid accumulated in the middle ear called a middle ear effusion. And you have your second ingredient for a middle ear infection. But you don't have a middle ear infection until you have a third ingredient, and that's inflammation. Given enough time, bacteria will find this warm, protein-rich fluid in your middle ear cavity and will accumulate. Your immune system will react and you'll have inflammation and increasing pressure in this sealed middle ear cavity. Now you have the three ingredients for a middle ear infection. You have a closed eustachian tube, you have accumulation of fluid into the middle ear cavity, and you have inflammation caused by an accumulation of bacteria and your immune response. One last thing to consider now is why infants and children get many more middle ear infections than adults do. Well, as you can see in this diagram, the orientation of the eustachian tube in infants is much more horizontal than it is in adults. We believe that it's this orientation in infants and children that allows more secretions into the eustachian tubes and creates more opportunity for blockages.